Hey guys, so I'm back again with another episode, uh, with another classic episode review of Doctor Who. This time being the Ark of Infinity. Now, I know I said that I would be on here with Legopolis, but I haven't gotten that yet. So I've gotten this episode first, so I'm going ahead and reviewing it since I just finished watching it. I'm in Nova, and I'm actually uh, just about to watch the commentary. But, uh, anyways, that's not what this is about. This is about my thoughts on the episode. And after having just finished watching it, I can tell that some time has passed for the for Peter Davison as the Doctor. Like, he's already, like, at this point of the run, he's clearly within, clearly within, like, his own as the Doctor and having, nah, and having a full season under his belt, because this was the first season, first episode of his second season as the Doctor. And you can clearly tell some time has passed from this episode to this one. To, to this one. Because not only one is his... Because, again, I have to give... Uh, I'm going to give a pass to his first episodes of Doctors, because with, unlike with this one... Unlike with this one, when he's fully established as who he is, this one, on the other hand, is a... He had just regenerated from Tom Baker at the beginning of the story. So, I... And then, at the same time, when... The next season, when he becomes... When this episode takes place, which is his... Which is his regeneration story, his doctor comes to a... His doctor comes to a head, like to what he would eventually become. And also, well, another thing worth notes: um, Nisa and Tegan Travanka are both uh, very like prominent in the story more than they were in the first one, mainly because there's less uh, convoluted plot going on. Unlike with Castrovalva, which I couldn't even follow the plot to that. But unlike but Arkham Infinity, I but Arkham Infinity, however, I followed the plot from the beginning to end. And unlike other some other classic Doctor Who stories, kinda like um Time Lash or Robot or heck, even Time and Mark of the Rani. They are all have very convoluted stories. Yet this one, on the other hand, you can you can tell how they're setting it up and how good it is when they do it. And another thing to worth note is this is the uh, story that at first introduces the audience to Colin Baker, not as what he would become as the Doctor, but this is a story he did before getting the opportunity to play the role, because his director, his manager, offered him the role of Commander Moxel, which he is noted as saying that he didn't really, well, that he was hesitant on taking it, for fearing that he might not be able to get the role of the Doctor later on, and they responded, "Fat chance of it ever ha that ever happening. Take the job." He did the role. And then, uh, when he went to a wedding to, for, I think it was a producer or something of the show, but he went, they, they went to a wedding and, uh, met up with John Nathan Turner, who was the showrunner or whatever it was called at the time, and basically met up with, and basically got the, the opportunity from doing the job there, which... This is actually uh, probably what is most known as the classic Who version of the, what happened uh, for, with Colin Baker to get six is also what happened with Karen Gillan and Peter Capaldi with New Who because they were in the episode um, Fires of Pompeii in David Tennant's era. Karen Gillan eventually would go on to become Amy Pond, and Capaldi, of course, becoming my least, one of my least favorite doctors, Eyebrows. 
Yep, Scotty himself. Now, this is, I'm not, I'm not talking about Peter Capaldi, but I was at least bringing up that it's funny how it happened, that happened in both New Who and Old Who. That, that, in, that literally they did an episode not even related to where they would eventually go with the series. It's kind of funny how that happens. <laughs> uh, anyways, so... As I've said before, you can... So, other notes is, um... Uh, this is clearly after, uh, Adric's death, because... Unlike in the first episode, when he's present, uh... Clearly this is after Earthshock, because... Again, he's not there, and... They mention they do mention Cybermen, so I take it. If I'm not mistaken, this is two episodes after that. I think, because like, yeah, she, the beginning of the episode, um, Tegan basically says, "The TARDIS used to be in a, a state of temporal grace." You said, "Guns couldn't be fired," and basically the Doctor goes, "Well, nobody's perfect." And I like how that still remains true, even in Modern Who. Uh, like, with, um, Let's Kill Hitler. Basically, it's brought up with, um, with Mel's that, uh, she goes, You said the TARDIS was in a state of temporal grace! And then Matt Smith goes, That was a clever lie! <laughs> and, um, so yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, and I have... And if, the other thing worth note is I like how Rassilon is a fact is basically a continuous factor throughout the Doctor's um, existence because he's in this story and he's brought and he's also in New Who because I think he's both in the Tenet era and also in the Capaldi era of the show because uh, he's in, he's in the episode where. Uh, what is it? Uh, da, 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 da. uh, Hellbent. He's in Hellbent, uh, as Rossalon the Redeemer. It's kind of, which, to know that he's as far back as the Peter Davison era, that's just, that's just awesome. <laughs> okay, anyways, so, basically, I, there's not even talking about the plot, it's literally just, I, I know about Omega, who, if I'm not mistaken, he was originally in the Tom Baker era, and then eventually, and is now in the Davison era, which of course he dies, but, and I'm imagining like, I'm just imagining like the lack of budget that old who had, <laughs> and then them just hiring like someone else to be like Peter Davison's body double when they had to film the, uh, Parts where Omega looked like the Doctor, because <laughs> that had some uh, nineteen. That kind of had the vibe, same vibes as the original Parent Trap, not the Lindsay Lohan one, but the other one. But uh, that. Other than that, basically, I liked the episode, and considering the episode, this is this video is already at nine minutes long. I had a lot more to say about it than I did with Costa Malva. And, and yet, I have, I'm pretty sure my review of this was a lot longer than both of those reviews have been. And as I have seen more and more, wait, I've now seen two episodes with Tegan and Niza and Tegan and Niza. I, I actually can get a, I got a good sense of who they are as companions, because, like, Tegan kind of seems like, like, keeping, do she's not spiky, but she's also, like, she keeps the doctor on her toe, on his toes, and, did I say Tegan or Niza? If I, if I said Tegan, I meant Niza, but, um, for Tegan, uh, the, do the Council of the Geek, no, not the Council of the Geeks, uh, um, what's his name, uh, Clever Dick Studios, who does, um, 
uh, the Doctor Who reviews, uh, I think he said it best. Tegan most definitely is a mouth, a walking mouth on legs. Because most of her, what her dialogue is, is nothing but, uh, sass. And <laughs> I'm living for it. In both this story and in the one previous. I, I say previous because this is literally Davidson's first story and I only have three at the moment. Which is actually a, um, a lot more than I what I had at first because if you remember back when I started these reviews I only had Kiz, Kiz Van Drazani, which is still my favorite, which is still of the ones I've seen so far, still my favorite Davidson era of episode even though I've only seen three of them so far. And I'm still more partial to Perry because I've seen where her character goes, and I only I've only seen two adventures with Tegan and Niza. But I'm sure, I'm assuming they get better as the series goes on. And also, I also know who Sarah Jane Smith is because the reason I bring her up is because you know I I've already I've already talked about Robot, and basically you get to. Be, She's the companion during that episode because it's Tom Baker's first episode. But uh, enough about me, my ranting, enough about my rambling. Uh, this is basically all I got for the episode. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video, end the review here. Uh, what did you guys think of uh, Arkham Infinity? Uh, leave a comment. In the t leave a comment. In the description in the comments below and uh, click like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Doctor Who review to come because I do eventually I do plan to get more of Classic Who to get more and more of my collection going because if you can if you can see where my my Doctor Who collection at the moment like my DVDs you already know about my 13th Funko Pop but well actually you've seen most of it it in my reviews, haven't you? Because I show them. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye.